post-divorce finances. Men and women both worry about how they're going to make ends meet after divorce. My name is Laura Hurd, and I'm an attorney who has been helping families get divorced in San Antonio, Texas since 1987. Over the years, I've heard many of my clients worry about this. Women especially generally make less than their husbands still, and they're going to be living on less than half of their income after divorce. Most families are two-income families, and so now after divorce, there's only going to be one income, plus half of the assets that you've accumulated have now been split up with your ex-spouse, and you have that expensive attorney's fee bill. So with less income, more debt and less assets, your retirement's half gone, then you worry about how are you going to make ends meet. Men are worried about how they're going to make men's ends meet after they pay child support and sometimes alimony. And women, even with the child support coming in, are worried about how they're gonna pay for everything as well. So here are some essential strategies for dealing with that post-divorce financial trauma. First of all, make a budget. Sit down, write down all of your normal monthly expenses. Think about things that you only pay once a year, like getting the car inspected and registered, putting new tires on the car, things you know like taxes on the house and try to estimate what those will be and divide them out over 12 months as well so that the money will be accumulated by the time that big bill comes. Then you'll have to make some adjustments. You may have to make some hard choices when you look at what your income's gonna be versus what your bills are. You may have to look for less expensive housing or cut your budget in your groceries. Take heart though. Over time, things will get better. You are going to get a raise or get a better job or find a second job. As time goes by, your income will increase over time and things will get better. But for now, you've got to be flexible and maybe from month to month adjust that budget until you get to one that you can live with. Second, think about future goals. Think about long-term goals like college education for your children, buying a new car, a new house, or things like your retirement, and make plans for setting some money aside for your secure future as well. Third, consider having a financial advisor, someone like Edward Jones or Raymond James, to sit down and discuss with you how you can expect your investments to grow over time, how much you're going to need when the time comes, and how much you're going to have to put aside now on a monthly basis in order to meet those long-term financial goals. Our firm has several financial advisors that we recommend to people if they don't already have one of their own. But it's often heartening to talk to these people because when they can show you in a graph on a computer how your investments grow, it helps to put your mind at ease to realize that this is a doable plan. Finally, make a will and check the beneficiaries on your life insurance policy and your financial accounts because chances are somewhere in there you have named your ex-spouse. You no longer want to be the beneficiary on those accounts, so you need to name a new beneficiary and on your will, you need to make a new will. I hope this helps. My name is Laura Hurd. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.